Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. From today, besides internal martial art, I'd like to talk about some important Chinese philosophies including Taoism and Confucianism. The reason is that understanding these topics will help you master internal self practice better. Some people may say that many masters in history were illiterate, yet they reached a very high level in Kung Fu practice. Well, in my opinion, this claim is not correct. First of all, it is true that some of the great fighters in history were not very educated as per today's standard. But the societal environment around them was conducive to their practice. Today, it is impossible for us to create or replicate that specific type of social and cultural environment. The language we speak, the lifestyle we have, daily activity we involve, especially the way of thinking we are adapted to, all have a strong impact on the result of learning some traditional practice. Also, it is not a solution to find a place to study or practice in order to have the cultural experience, since that place already changed. For example, there are many places in China which offer a so-called traditional cultural experience for Taoist studies. But you should be aware that those are actually businesses which package their courses such that Westerners would find them visually appealing. So, for our own benefit, in order to reach a high level in practice, instead of looking for a replicated fancy plan, one should work on oneself. We can improve our internal environment in terms of knowledge and the comprehension of said knowledge, so that we can practice in the right direction. Also, with regards to certain practice such as meditation and qigong, it is impossible to even start without the necessary information about their theory and practice. Therefore, it is essential to know Taoism theory for those who really want to improve their internal self-practice, including both martial art and energy practice such as meditation and qigong. Regarding Chinese philosophy, personally, I practice both Taoism and Confucianism. Especially, I prefer the approach that integrates both systems together. This is not a new approach at all since throughout history, both schools of thought plus other systems such as Buddhism have influenced each other in terms of practice, teaching, application, and development. So, unless you take Taoism as a religion, then based on my experience, it will be great to integrate both Taoism and Confucianism in practice since each of them can offer unique benefit to us. But for the time being, we will focus on Taoism. In today's video, we will cover the following topics. First, what is Taoism? Second, brief history of each school of Taoism. Third, how to practice Taoist philosophy and meditation. 4. Demonstration and Topic 5. Takeaways. So, let's get started. First topic, what is Taoism? Taoism, also written as Taoism, depending on translation, is an indigenous Chinese philosophical and religious system with a history of more than a thousand years. It is part of the Chinese culture and the Taoism concept, practice, application, 
and its derivatives can be found everywhere in daily life in China. Please keep in mind that there are at least two types. Two types. One is philosophical Taoism, and the other one is religious Taoism. They are two totally different fields, in reality, which will be explained in the next topic. Topic two: brief history of each branch of Taoism. Let's talk about the philosophical Taoism or Dao Jia first. I have briefly introduced Lao Zi in my Dan Tian introduction video. Link is in the description. To clear a common misconception, Lao Zi was not his real name. It was a honorific. In ancient China, people called someone Zi to show respect. So the translation of Lao Zi is Old Master. His actual name was Li Er, and his courtesy name was Bo Yang. In some documents, he was called Lao Dan, since Li Dan was his literary name. Lao Zi is considered the founder of philosophical Taoism, since there is no written record of his birth and death. People only know that he lived sometime between 600 to 400 BCE. Most of us, if not all, have heard that Tao Te Ching or the Book of Tao. People credit Lao Zi as the author of this book. However, in Chinese history, there was another important figure named Huang Di, or The Yellow Emperor, a legendary mytho-historical name in Chinese culture dating back to about 5,000 years ago. Fun fact: the popular Chinese term Yan Huang Zi Sun reflects the belief that all Chinese people are descendant of Huang Di or Yellow Emperor and Yan Di or Flame Emperor. The Later, being another legendary mytho historical figure, very often people believed that the concept of the Taoism was originally created by the Yellow Emperor. However, there is no written record of this claim. This claim is a product of cultural utopianism, a topic I introduced in my Tai Chi debate video. Link is in the description. Lao Tzu was the originally original author of Tao Te Ching, or the Book of Tao, which is supposed to be a collection of Taoist concepts existing around that period of time. In order to respect the Yellow Emperor as well as recognize the contribution of Lao Tzu, people used the ter- term Huang Lao, or the first. Two characters of the term of Huang Di and Lao Zi to name this specific school of thought. Due to this, Taoism is also called the school of Huang and Lao, or adherents of Huang Lao thought, in many Chinese books to describe the Taoist thought back to that specific time. Philosophical Taoism is a school of thought, a, philosoph- a, philosoph- a philosophical system, which means that in this system there is first no god, second no temple, third no religious doctrine, and fourth no other binding religious practice. Now let's move on to religious Taoism. Since we have briefly introduced the religious Taoism in my previous video on this topic of Dan Tian, I will only summarize some key points on this topic. First, Zhang Ling or Zhang Dao Ling, from 34 to 156 CE, was a hermit in Eastern Han Dynasty. He founded. 
the way of the celestial masters, sect of uh, Taoism. In religious Taoism, since he is one of the four celestial masters, religious Taoists believe he did not die, instead he ascended to heaven with his wife and two disciples and became an immortal while he was 123 years old. Second, Lao Tzu is believed to have existed about 700 years before Zhang Ling. A logical conclusion that follows is that philosophical Taoism is approximately 700 years older than religious Taoism. Third, around the 7th century, Tao De Jing or the Book of Changes, the philosophical book was named as Tao and the Virtue Authentic Doctrine or Tao De Zhen Jing in Mandarin by religious Taoist. This happened in the Tang Dynasty since the family name of the Tang Dynasty Emperor was Li, the same as that of Lao Tzu. Taoism became the official national religion in that dynasty. So, many new titles had been given to Lao Tzu such as the Grand Supreme Elder Lord, the Grand Pure One, the Universally Honored Virtuous One, and the Tao's Ancestor, and many others. Thus, religious Taoists created a god out of a philosopher. Now, let's study some Chinese terms. First, Dao Jia or Daoist school, a common name for, for philosophical Daoist. Second, Dao Jiao or Daoist religion that is self explanatory. Three, Dao Xue, Daoist study. Since the beginning of the last century, some Daoist scholars and practitioners such as Chen Yangning and Jiang Weiqiao promoted an idea that Daoist internal meditation or internal alchemy should be independent from religious Daoist, Daoism and other systems. And this idea was widely accepted. So now, when people talk about Dao Xue or Daoist study, it includes Tao's philosophy or Tao Jia, Tao's religion or Tao Jiao, and Nei Dan or Tao's meditation, internal alchemy. Meditation has, be, has been practiced for thousands of years. Over this period, many schools following different practice, practical methods emerged and evolved. However, it only separated as an independent irreligious practice about 100 years ago. If you ask me the reason, I would say that since the end of the 19th century, with the introduction and the development of modern science, religious Taoism was at the verge of disappearance. To ensure the survival of meditation, some Taoist pioneers such as Chen Yingning evolved Taoist practice by not only making it an independent system but also contributed a great deal of effort to promote this. I will introduce him in the future since he is such an important figure in Taoist history. So, Dao Xue includes three parts. Dao Jia or philosophical Taoism, Dao Jiao or religious Taoism, Nei Dan or Taoist meditation. Even though they all focus on the same term Tao, the meaning is different in each branch. In religious Taoism, Tao is the way to become immortal. In philosophical Taoism, Tao is the principle to understand universal, natural, human, and social phenomena. In Taoist meditation, Tao is to achieve certain results through practice 
of specific training principles. For example, religious Taoists try to become immortal through meditation, and non-religious Taoists practice meditation to understand the Tao and reach a higher level of human development, or individual merges with Tao as one, or Yu Dao He Yi in Mandarin. An individual or postmodal human being integrates with Tao, the primordial state of being. This is why Nei Dan or Tao's meditation is considered a path to achieve the Great Tao through practice. Topic 3 How to study Taoism for practice purposes? To answer this question, you first need to identify what you want to practice. I will not go any further into religious Taoism, instead, I will only focus on philosophical Taoism and Taoist meditation. If you are interested in religious Taoism, you can find many resources elsewhere. Regarding philosophical Taoism, there have been many books and documents published in the West. I encourage you to read them to gain a better understanding of Taoist philosophy. Since theory, concept, and the principle derived from Taoist philosophy can be applied in internal style of martial art practice, understanding some Taoist philosophy will be helpful to practitioners. Based on my personal experience, Specific practice requires specific theory for guidance in internal style training. This is one of the benefits of studying Taoist philosophy. Furthermore, and more importantly, Taoist meditation is a system based on Taoism. I will focus on introducing this system in future videos. Please. Let me know in the comment section what specific topics you would like to study in Taoist meditation. That would help me in structuring future videos. Now, let me briefly outline how to study Taoist meditation. But before we go there, I would like to first clarify one important point about what meditation is and is not. In a Taoist context, Taoist meditation requires stillness, relaxation, and following some specific procedures. There are definite mom moments in Taoist meditation when you should focus, and some other moments when you should let go. If you practice violate these specific principles, then you will not achieve the right result. Another example is that some people walk and or move with the meditative intention in practicing slow motion movements. It would be wrong to call it Taoist meditation. In Chinese, there are no equivalent term for the word meditation. For more than 2000 years, Taoists called it Xiu Dao. Here, Xiu means to cultivate to, or to practice. Therefore, Xiu Dao means to cultivate Dao. So, meditation is directly related to the Dao. It reflects the importance of meditation in the whole Taoist system. Taoists believe that meditation is a way to discover and merge with the Great Tao. It looks like a belief system, but in reality, this approach and method has been applied for thousands of years in China in order to achieve different goals in practice. To study Tao's meditation, one has to read some important meditation classics. Unfortunately, those documents were written in code to hide the practical method. In the ancient times, this kind of information 
was not allowed to be disseminated widely in society due to its perceived benefit and the fear of uh, misuse. So, there's no way to understand the practical techniques by simply reading those ancient books and the documents, no matter what language, including Chinese. You need someone to explain and interpret it first. Only then can one follow the instructions and the practice. Like I said before, I would like to translate some of these important documents and interpret them accordingly. Again, I want to caution you against practicing it without the correct interpretation or else it will lead to unwanted consequences. Second, do not expect certain energy or spiritual experiences during or after practice as descriptive in the documents. This is a key principle in practice. Let things happen naturally without your intervention. Do not force it at all. This is the general principle of Tao's practice. However, it won't be considered an exaggeration if you call it the golden rule of practice. Third, whenever you experience a certain sensation or reaction, continue to follow the principle of being neutral. Let our primordial mind handle it naturally. This requires some training and practice. In the end, if you practice meditation not to become an immortal, then the ultimate goal of meditation is to refine your energy, your mind, your spirit to be healthier, happier, or make life better. So, you have to treat it seriously and make sure at least you have some basic knowledge, instruction, clear objectives, and to be able to receive some guidance. Or if you are not ready, then my suggestion would be to just not practice it. Topic 4. Demonstration Before we talk about any technical aspect of meditation practice, let me introduce how to apply the meditative exercise in martial art. Some internal style masters of prior generations such as Sun Lu Tang tried to integrate meditation into their martial art styles. Sun Lu Tang emphasized meditation in the beginning or preparatory section of the form. This concept made sense at the theoretical level. He used the Wu Ji concept to talk, up, to talk about Wu Ji stance, or the stance before beginning any forms. Yes, in theory, that's fine. However, in practice, that is not the right approach. The reason is very simple. In Taoist practice, energy raised in Wuji stand should come without our mental or psychological intervention. Only when a practitioner maintains the same posture for a considerable period of time without any physical movement, can it be considered meditation. However, since the so-called Wuji stance is practiced before beginning the form, you have to move or practice other physical movements, which results in physical and mental intervention. And as I mentioned before, it can no longer be considered meditation. It ends up being merely a preparatory practice or just a preparation for meditation. To give you another example, in Xingyi practice, we have a Santi posture practice, or any Xingyi routine is from this posture. But do you think? Santi is meditation. If you do, then that's not Santi anymore. Martial art practice of Santi and the traditional meditation practice are mutually exclusive. Because Santi practice 
requests us to have active strength, conscious focus, and subtle motion in the body, among other factors. When you incorporate all those factors in a stance, it cannot it can no longer be considered a meditation. My suggestion is that you add meditation to the end of each section of a practice instead of at the beginning. For example, after you practice a form or routine, you put your hand on your lower abdomen and focus on either the whole body or the lower dantian area and relax the body, the mind, the spirit, and adjust the breathing, the mind, and the spirit. Then, your entire body, including your physical body and your energy body, will enter a meditative state. That is the meditation practice within martial art practice. Sure, we should consider the instructions of the prior generation of masters. However, we should not take them at face value. If their practice has any problems, we should consider Tao's principle and revise the practice. This is how a practice evolves. My suggestion to you in today's video is to pay special attention to your closing form. Even if it is very short, try to slow it down and focus on the inside of the area where your hands pass by. Then focus on either the whole body or the lower dantian area for a while, depending on your situation. After that, you can resume work on other practice or get some rest in order to give the body the necessary time to make sure the energy will return to its origin, commonly known as dantian. During this time, you can close your eyes or keep your eyes open. The key is train your mind. Relax without strong concentration, be aware of your ex existence and then let everything go, including your surroundings, your body, your breathing, and finally even yourself. You can practice this at the end of each martial art training session. You can also practice this at other times in your daily life. Whenever time permits, of course, you need the more specific instruction, but that simple practice outlined above is good enough for a start. I recommend you make this a habit and you will notice the benefit with time. Now, let me demonstrate it for you. So, to any end of the movement, what you can do is like this. You can move up the palms from any posture. Then slowly move down the palms or focus inside of the body. And then even slowly, eventually, palms keep moving downward and put the palms on the stomach. And then maintain that posture as long as you want. You can keep a standing posture or a sitting posture, but the focus on the whole body or the space behind the palm. Do this slowly. Then eventually move down the palms. Topic 5. Take aways. First, Dao Jia and Dao Jiao are two different topics, even though both of them consider Lao Tzu's Dao De Jin or the Book of Changes its most important documents. Second, Dao Jia, Dao Jiao, and Nei Dan or Dao's Meditation are considered the three pillars of Dao Xue or Daoist study. 3. Daoist meditation is the center of a practical approach for Daoists to understand the universe, to improve ourselves, and to merge with the universe as one in the physical, energy, and the spirit levels. 4. In Daoist practice, specific objectives require specific method. 5. A brief meditation at the end of each internal martial art training section will reap considerable benefit over time. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.